former Michigan State two-time All-American Clinton Jones is one of 15 players and two coaches named to the College Football Hall of Fame. How about that? Now, a three-year letterman from 1964 to 1966 for legendary head coach Duffy Darty. Jones accounted for 2,549 career all-purpose yards and 23 touchdowns. Jones also led the team in rushing and all-purpose yards in his final two seasons while helping the Spartans to a combined record of, get this, 19-1-1, including back-to-back Big Ten and national championships in 1965 and 66. It's a pleasure to welcome Clinton Jones to WKAR's Current Sports. Clinton, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful, Al. How about yourself? I am doing fantastic. Again, thanks so much for joining us today. And and first off, Clinton, uh, I want to start our convo by talking about, you know, how and when you got the call that you are going to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, uh, which, of course, that ceremony will take place in December. Where were you when you got the call, Clinton? I was in my office actually working. I'm a chiropractor, and uh, I got a call from John Lewandowski, and he asked me, was I sitting down? I said, no, not exactly. I'm moving around. You know, so he said, well, uh, and then uh, he said, well, hold on to your seat. Have a seat. Or just... <laughs> and he told me the news. It just totally floored me out. I was, you know, I was speechless and teary-eyed and just really surprised. Right, and I, I can only imagine what went through your head, Clinton, because, I mean, we're talking about the College Football Hall of Fame. And, again, I was there, actually, when you were inducted into the Michigan State University Athletics Hall of Fame back in 2012. I mean, when you compare both both Hall of Fames, I mean, both incredible honors. I mean, but, I mean, this this encompasses all of college football. Does this, this one mean more at all? Well, well, it, it does. And, of course, you got to go into the college. You know, it has to be recognized by your university first. And, you know, I mean, that being recognized by Michigan State, you know, and their Hall of Fame, first of all, that was kind of overwhelming honor because, to be very honest, I was never looking for it. I mean, it wasn't kind of on my radar. That I was never wondering, well, when am I going to be inducted into it? That really wasn't in my consciousness. Mm-hmm. And then people were bringing it up to me, when are you going to be inducted? But, you know, I said, well, you know, I don't have anything to do with it. But I said, I never thought about it. So it's a great honor to be inducted into Michigan State's Hall of Fame. And then people said, well, now, you know, you definitely should be in the College Hall of Fame. And, uh, and, and believe me, I was really appreciative to it. But I wasn't, uh, you know, expecting it. And I thought maybe it could happen. As a matter of fact, it was overwhelming because I thought that the battle was already in for 2015. I said, well, maybe, maybe I have a chance for 2016, you know. And I, <laughs> so I was telling, telling my daughter, I said, you know, I have five daughters. I said, why don't you all go on a, on a Facebook campaign? Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah young people, then that social media. But I was joking. So my daughter, my one daughter, Tiffany, she said, well, Daddy, I'll – I don't have any money to join the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the National Football College uh, board where you can get an opportunity to vote, but I'll pray for you. <laughs> you know, <it's> nice. <laughs> well, so, I tell you what, Clint, so her, John, her, her prayers worked. <laughs> well, they sure did. They sure did, because I mean, I was totally shocked. Because I thought that all the balloting was over, right? And so I was looking towards, you know, which would be 2016. But you know. Um, Everything worked out. Just uh, this is the year. This year, 2015. I've been saying it. I've been saying it all this year and before this year. It's very, very significant for Spartan Nation. Yeah, it, it certainly is, and and that's uh, a great segue into my my next uh, round of questions for you, Clinton. I want to get your thoughts on first off what Coach D'Antonio um, has been able to do throughout his tenure here as the head football coach. Uh, of the Spartans, 
And, uh, you know, looking at, you know, just, just the past two years here, I mean, uh, a Rose Bowl championship. Um, and then after that, they, they win the Cotton Bowl. Uh, they've been ranked uh, as a top five college football team. Um, you know, back-to-back -back years, they're a preseason top five team in the Associated Press Poll this season. Uh, talk about how Coach D'Antonio has really been able to, to put this program, um, you know, back on the map, I should say, so to speak, and, 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 and really give it national prominence to where now, I mean, having the conversation of Michigan State winning a national championship does not feel far-fetched at all. Well, it's not far fish in my mind at all. I'm expecting it. I'm expecting it. And I'll tell you, Mark turned to me. Mark showed me his character, what kind of person he was. When he uh, came to Los Angeles, when he's hired, and took Bob and I to the lunch and laid out his program and his, his, his mission. And I felt his heart and I felt his life. And uh, and he has just uh, been true to his mission and just improving every every year. And I knew there was something very special about him. Mm -hmm. I just you know how you just you know in your gut that you know this man is on a mission. He's driven, and so I have so much respect and admiration for him because he's a man of the people. He's a great teacher. And I was just thinking a lot about him this mo this morning, and and he feels the same way I do. Football is about life, and it's about people, and it's about a uh, a shared commitment. You know, mm -hmm. kind of like a shared humanity, where it's not you, you have to unselfishly put out for the people that you that you are gathered together in your mission. You know, and he's a person that. Um, He's very uh, spiritual and at the same time practical, and uh, and he shows with his life condition the things in this game that adds value, you know, to these men. Not only when they're on the gridiron, but when they leave the university and then in the gridiron of life that we all have to do, mm -hmm. you know, he gives them, he teaches values. Yeah. So he's uh. And the other thing that he did, he married the past with the uh, with the present. Now, it's very essential to have an essential understanding of the past and the superficial one. So by bringing in my generation, which is far removed from this 21st century uh, uh, Spartan nation, you know, it, it has kind of like a foundation of um, – of excellence and accomplishment that he's been able to instill in these players now. But they're not looking back, but they're actually building on the foundation that was set 50 years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate that. So with this administration, with Coach Mark D'Antonio and uh, A.D. Mark Hollis and President Luana K. Simon, I feel the same synergy and feeling that I felt when I was a youngster at Michigan State, and that's very remarkable. So when the season comes around, and when they've been playing over these seven going to the eight years now, I have the same feeling, even though I don't have the capacity to go on the field, I'm on the field in terms of my heart, in terms of my determination. And, I, and this is a remarkable administration. You and, know, and Clinton, this is a different era, right. but the spirit is always the same. You know, uh, uh, the uh, forever victorious, never be defeated, never give up, and that's the kind of that's the kind of spirit that Mark, with his other coaches, his other teachers, you know, these the, you know everybody supporting the program, they have that kind of determination. So it's been building like a snowball. This ball has been getting bigger and bigger and bigger each year, and so this is the breakout year. Yeah, and I say that unequivocally. I don't have no doubt. I have no doubt. You think this team is going to win it all? And, and yes, I have no doubt. Yeah, I love that, Clinton. Again, folks, if you're just now joining us here on WKRS Current Sports, we are chatting with Clinton Jones, former Michigan State running back, great, who will be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame later on this year. Now, Clinton, I, I want to briefly chat about your time 
here on campus as a player? Because you just mentioned how, you know, Mark D'Antonio has done a phenomenal job at bridging the present with the past and um, talking about that past. I mean, your time spent with, uh, you know, Duffy, you know, head coach of the, you know, legendary head coach of the football team back then, you know, Gene Washington, George Webster, uh, Bubba Smith. What was your time like here on campus? If you could summarize it really briefly for us. If I can, sum- if I can summarize, I'd say Duffy celebrated diversity at a time when diversity was not even on the radar. Mm-hmm. He celebrated with Pacific Pacific Islanders, Hawaii and Samoa, and uh, and players from the South. They couldn't go to school or play athletics in the schools in the South. And he brought us together from different cultures, and he created a a culture of of uh, humanity with a mission. Right, and yeah. that's what the same thing that that's the same thing that. That uh, Mark Antonio is done. He, you know, he definitely used to take us wearing shoes in Marshall, Michigan, mm-hmm. and we had those blazers and the berets, you know. And he, uh, <laughs> he, he brought us together, and and we didn't even know the backgrounds that each other came from because we didn't talk about the guys and talk about the situation in the South, and and you know, we came from some uh, into a new, it was a whole paradigm shift, experiences that we had never even considered before we came together and we're only focused on one thing now is winning. When that freshman class came in nineteen sixty three, we made up our mind that we could compete with anybody and we and we weren't even able to play any games. <laughs> when we went up to play Church and Lewis and doing Lincoln, mm. we said we're gonna kick their butts, you know. So we're here. You know, and, and they and they felt they felt our spirit. They felt our our our, our challenge. And then when we moved into our sophomore year, it was just a matter of building and building. So that same synchronicity, that same, uh, you know, uh, uh, spirit that we had during that time, I saw the same thing building with this, these 21st century Spartans. Now, Clinton, can you talk about how uh, Duffy Darty, of course, you know, really changed the paradigm of not just – you know, college sports, but sports in general. Um, when when you when you hint on recruiting blacks down south to here to the north, I mean, how did that really change the paradigm of where sports was he- headed? Well, see, that's the thing about it. He like uh, <laughs> he was a pioneer, and he was thinking about that. You know, thinking about it. he was doing that long before it was fashionable. He, he was it was like a salmon swimming upstream. That's a good example. Swimming upstream, swimming against the tide of segregation mm-hmm. and separatism, and and uh, and uh, and the idea that that uh, black players could only do certain positions, and you know, it's, you know, it was, which is only based on ignorance, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, he he uh, he brought that in, and so did Biggie Monk. As a matter of fact, you know, you have to think Michigan State University itself. Brought about a whole paradigm shift in the whole country. That's the thing about it. Michigan State, there in East Lansing, that, that Michigan State University was doing something on a, on a scale that no other university that I know of, a state university, was doing. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't just an exceptional thing. There was it was a, it was a culture there at Michigan State. Right, and that's something to really, you know, I I delved into the history. I started studying. I uh, went online, so I studied about President Hannah, Biggie, and and also like a Duffy, and I started looking at, you know, President Luanna Simon, you know, which is another another first, you know, the first woman president of the university. My mentor said that the 21st century is a century of the spirit, a century of women and a century of people that have suffered the most breaking through. You know, mm-hmm. when you look at it, you know. It's been pretty much a black and brown population, but in reality, humanity is one family. So that's been this one familyness, regardless of the diversity of the different color flowers and scents. That's the culture that Michigan State has. And so once the community gets in, you know, with the same spirit as the athletic department and all the sports, but especially in football, because it's representative of that, like, uh, eternal struggle in life that we go through. Mm-hmm. But because we have faith, you know, we can we can stride, you know, in, in, in peace 
and, and, and security, knowing that we can accomplish whatever we want to do. So yeah, yeah. that's, uh, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, certainly. That's, that's been a legacy. That's been a legacy of Michigan State. And and it's just a matter of time till we have the people that show up. So this administration showed up 50 years later, just as before. So we come full circle, and it's at a time that's very much needed. We need positive stories and 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 uh, and victories, so that we can show the world, you know, how wonderful America is, how wonderful you know the opportunities are here, in spite of the obstacles. So it's because of the obstacles that you know that we were able to turn poison into medicine in our generation. 50 years ago. Now, this generation is doing the same thing now. That is so true. So there are a lot of yeah. pessimists that don't believe that, you know, you know, you know, you know, we all know what's going on in society today, but we're changing that by the causes that we're making. And that's what I like about Mark D'Antonio. He's cause-oriented. Right. He calls it. And because he believes in the law of cause and effect and that you reap what you sow, he teaches that. Right. So it's no accident that we're where we're at now. That is so true, Clinton. And um, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to uh, to checking out the uh, the really just remarkable project that, um, uh, of course, your former teammate uh, Gene Washington and his uh, his daughter Maya have put together, entitled "Through the Banks of the Red Cedar." Uh, as that will be debuted right here on Michigan State's campus uh, next week, Thursday. So definitely looking forward uh, to, to to checking out that documentary and really uh, taking a you know a firsthand look of um, of what took place back in the '60s and how again, as you just so eloquently stated, Clinton, how uh, Michigan State was really a, a pioneer in um, in really pushing for diversity um, in sports uh, here and and beyond sports here uh, right at, at at Michigan State. So, uh, Clinton, before we get you out of here, I, I, I really uh, want to talk about, um, first off, uh, concussions in the world of, of, of football because it's a conversation that seems to be getting more and more traction as time goes on. I actually checked out a, a trailer for uh, actor Will Smith and uh, his new movie, which is entitled Concussion, in which he plays the doctor who actually discovered CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, um, which is caused by constant banging of the brain uh, through physical force over time. And um, it's really interesting because it's going to open the, the door in conversation for many people out there and specifically parents out there when making the decision um, of allowing their, their little one to go out there and play the game or not. How do you think this is going to, you know, what we know about concussions and, 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 and its possible effects later on down the line, how do you think this is going to change the, the game of football itself? Well, you know, earlier when I mentioned about changing poison into medicine, this is a case of that this is another, like, uh, challenge for, for football, soccer, and sports, and, and boxing and things like that. And it's, and it's a very serious matter, and parents have to give a lot of attention to whether they want to take that, uh, they want to risk their children going out, putting themselves at risk. But, and to be very frank, life is risky. But, you know, there's been something that's been developed for quite a number of years. Now, I have to tell you, Al, I knew about this in 1980. Because as a chiropractor, I mentored with a doctor, Dr. Lowell Ward, and he was telling me through his uh, his research and the x-rays that he took of me, he told me about my own self and consequences if I didn't have the, the proper type of care to reverse this process. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is, well, what can you do about it? Well, by the advancements made in neuroscience, we now know that the thing that we thought before, that you can regenerate highly developed cells it's not true. So it's going to be a challenge. But the thing with it is, we have to keep things transparent, and we have to we have to uh, uh, look at how we can advance the game safely without taking away the aggressiveness. Because he, the football is an aggressive sport; it has to be played aggressively. But I think it'll open people's eyes. Where before, stuff was kept like uh, kept in the closet. 
you know, a certain something, you know, if this had come out 30 years ago without having the information that we have to in neuroscience, people may, you know, the game wouldn't be what it is today. But it's a great game because to me it's very much about life. And I know being in a chiropractor and being having studied the mind for over 45 years because I've always been intrigued about the mind, mm-hmm. I know that there is definitely this is this is a challenge that we can definitely overcome. As a matter of fact, I'm on the board of directors of an organization that started by former players, professional players called the uh, Retired Players Congress. And one of the things that we're doing as a nonprofit is to start a, a, a flag or touch football to teach kids the fundamentals at an early age, so they're not going and they're not going into combat or hitting heads from five to like you know five to years to 12 years or so to teach them how to how to play the game correctly mm-hmm. and protect themselves and still be aggressive so this will be something that's going to have a lot of controversy but the thing of it is you know every culture has something like this even primitive cultures have some type of contact or or, or battle and what it does it's a way of actually like humanizing them. Even a martial art is combat. But the thing is, in martial art, is to train yourself that, so that you don't have to fight. So I think that uh, we definitely will change the culture of of, uh, of of the game, but it won't take away the intensity and the joy of it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, out of adversity. That's where you can. That's where you can really grow, right? And, and that's what and that's what football is about turning turning adversity into opportunity. So I think that we don't have to worry about it. But the things deal with responsibly and like uh, not have put. You know, it's it's not going to go away, right? And if I, if a person if, if I don't I have all girls, but if I had a son, he probably wouldn't be playing tackle football until maybe a junior high school or high school. Yeah. And for my my opinion, but he but I would want him to learn the basics. Now I myself learned my skills playing touch football in in the schoolyard because we were playing on asphalt and concrete. Right. You can't tackle on that. But you know, but we, we learned our skills, you know, how to dodge and block and, you know, do those kind of things. So I think that uh I'm very positive about the future. As a matter of fact, my wife and I are in that movie, Concussions, as extras. Really? Get out of here. Yeah. You, hold yeah, I don't know. Th- I, you held I, that to the yeah, very end, know. huh? <laughs> yeah, and that's something. Yeah, we're in. I don't know if they're going to show our part, but we're, we're in there as, like, I know they're going to show my wife's part. She's in it. We're sitting as a, con- as a congregation at, at the cemetery. <laughs> oh, wow. How about, how did well, that come about, Clinton? <laughs> Well, you know, they they had some prayers out here in California. They want to be part of it, and right. so we said, "Okay, yeah." So they had some NFL players, and so my wife and I we went over there, right, right, and uh, that place in Oxnard in, in Ventura County in California. That's not too far from where we live. So I'm anxious to see it. I, maybe I'll even see it this evening. And it's uh, and it's and it's something that's really needed, you know, yeah. to open people's eyes. But we don't need to fear, you know. Right. The last right. thing, you know. You know, this game is a great game. To me, it's the greatest game about life. There's so many things that it teaches young people, you know. Um, I got one grandson. He's not interested in football. I got five daughters, five granddaughters, another granddaughter on the way, and only one grandson. But he's just 10 years old, but he's uh, kind of a pacifist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. They, football might not be his game. <laughs> it might not be his game, but that's okay, you know. Yeah. And I'll tell you, when I started out, Al, as a as a my first year, I was 13 years old, my first time playing organized football. I wasn't very really good, and I was playing tackle. And I had a helmet that had no chin strap. It was a leather helmet, actually, that my, my grandmother got me because she's working for some people in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. That was my first helmet. And when I got in the ninth grade, I played five seconds of the last game of the season, the last final, the last uh, five seconds of the of the game, 
and we are losing 50 to nothing. So I guess the coach thought it was safe to put me into the game. Mm-hmm. I said, hell, I don't want to play this game. <laughs> but it was up to yeah. So then my blood came back out my sophomore year, went out for the JV, and I had a coach. He let me play more than my junior year. I, I didn't still didn't make first string, but I played my senior year. I got hurt twice and only played two games my senior year. Wow. So for me to go to Michigan State, you see, I know what, it come, what it's like to come from the bottom. I didn't have a lot of accolades in football. I wasn't highly sought after in football. I excelled in track, but my love is something about – I love the contact and getting out there. Mm-hmm. So my first sport was boxing. I started doing that at nine years old. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And, and and I mean, I was boxing at nine against kids 13 and 14 and being punched in the head and stuff like that. And it's, uh, yeah. So I guess, uh, I guess I've been a Spartan all my life. Yeah, you certainly have. And I, I tell you what, Clinton, we wish you uh, – and I, I want to know, will you be in town next week on Thursday? Yes, I will. I'll be that, there. That'll be great because we, we look forward to, to chatting with you. I'll, I'll be there, and I look forward to seeing you in person. And I want to uh, give a, a, a tremendous thanks for uh, for you uh, joining me on uh, today's show. That was tremendous insight. Uh, one and the only, Clinton Jones, former MSU running back. Great. Clinton, thanks so much, and I'll see you next week. Hey, hey, Al, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity for the interview. And will you do something for me? Text me a picture of you. Yeah, we'll do. We'll do. I will do that. I got your number, so I'll, I'll do that after we get off the air, Clinton. <laughs> hey, fantastic, Al. All right. Thanks a lot, Clinton. Hey, hey, Al. Yeah. Go green. Go green. There you go. Preach it, baby. Tom- this, this Friday, man, it's going to be <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> That's right. It's on now. All right. Thanks a lot, Clinton. Appreciate it. You're welcome, Al. Bye-bye. All right. How about that, Isaac? Clinton Jones, great insight. I mean, you know, one thing that, that, that really stands out uh, about Clinton is how passionate he is uh, about the game, uh, about this university, and uh, just about life, you know? And, uh, you know, I remember the first time I interviewed Clinton when I was a reporter at, at, at Channel 6 when he got inducted into the Michigan State Athletics Hall of Fame. Uh, another thing that stood out, I mean, Clinton can talk. I mean, he's got stories for days. So, um, you know, great insight, though, and 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 I look forward to to seeing him next week. But that, that was fantastic. Yeah, I certainly was. I love the stories about all his family's involvement in football and because that's a question we've been holding true throughout our time at current sports, the concussion issue and things like that. I thought yeah. that was such a great answer to that. Yeah, and he's got all daughters. He's got all daughters. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't really, you know, rain and hit on his responsibility too much, but, of course, with his grandkids later on in life. But, uh, but yeah, man, Clinton, I, I, he, he, he can talk, man. I mean, wow, that was, that was a, a pretty hefty interview. But we appreciate Clinton and his time. Uh, but, unfortunately, we have uh, come to that point in the hour where we have to say goodbye. So, um, again, folks, join us uh, tomorrow. Uh, we've got a great show in store for you. We give you a, a sneak peek of uh, this afternoon's current sports TV taping with Curtis Blackwell. You don't want to miss that of the MSU football team. You don't want to miss that, and we'll have uh, a ton more to talk about. But, uh, again, as always, folks, take care. Have a fantastic afternoon. Thanks so much to Clinton Jones for joining me on today's show. You have been listening to Current Sports right here on WKAR AM 870 East Lansing. Be easy, people.